are our stories. These are our realities. Before we, uh, I think so. before I give me my official peach, I'm waiting for it. Oh, ain't no peaches yeah. around here. Yeah, ain't no oh, man, okay. They didn't care, okay. All right, well, hey, well, welcome. We can skip the rest of that. I'll come back to it, but we are live. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. We're live from the studio. If you would like to book this space, please feel free to call uh, 515. 515- Nine nine six zero three two six. Again, the number is five one five nine nine six zero three two six. I will repeat this: We are here because we're talking about voting while black. There's a lot on the ballot, and I want you all to be paying attention. We know that from the top down, you got governor, U.S. You got uh, governor, Senate, congressional, state races, and then when you flip the ballot over, there there are other pieces that we want you to discuss. We have Ms. Tiara Mays here with us today. Hello, hello. But our first guest is here and ready to go. We have Ms. Connie Ryan with us, and she is here to discuss a ballot measure that is on the back side of the ballot. And so we want you all to pay attention to what's happening and why these things are important. Welcome to the show, Ms. Connie Ryan. Thank you so much, Mr. Rob Dock. <laughs> Tiara, good to see you well, again. Good to see we you work too. together so much, for those who don't yeah. know. Uh, you've probably seen Connie and some of the stuff that we did, even when Justin Bieber lent his name and likeness to us. And when, then he didn't show up. And then he didn't because it's, <laughs> he, he got, they said he got caught up. Uh, oh, he has some kind of, he was ill for a little yes, bit. He, yeah, yeah, I can't think yeah, of his name. And but he yeah, had something he had come thing. up. <laughs> yeah, and then he mentioned what we did at the show. Right. And he talked, then I got, they, they sent me the video of him talking about what we did here right. at the show, which I appreciated the you know yeah. shout out but i know the kids really yeah. wanted to see justin bieber yeah um but also connie has been there during multiple instances where we have had whether it was a candlelight whether it was a policy conversation whether it was pushing or raising money um just for our community so connie talk to us about what's happening on the ballot yeah so i'm the executive director of interfaith alliance of iowa mm-hmm. and full disclosure rob's on the board yes. so thank you so much for your service in that regard um, and we do a broad spectrum of issues and about almost every social justice issue that you can think of a couple that we don't do. But um, And we got into um, talking about and educating folks on gun violence, gun safety um, 10 years ago after Sandy Hook happened. And we also do a lot of public policy work. And so the legislature passed a constitutional amendment. And the way our process works in Iowa is the legislature passes it twice, and then it goes to the voters um, for their vote up or down. 
And so on the back of the ballot, as you said, there will be a constitutional amendment on guns. Um, it is not the Second Amendment. That's what I want people to hear first. It is not the Second Amendment. We actually lobbied to try and get them to just take the Second Amendment and put it in the language for the amendment to the Constitution, and they refused to do that. Um, it didn't go far enough. Uh, the Second Amendment didn't go far enough. They, they rejected the Second Amendment language. That tells you a little bit, right? Yeah. And um, so it is much more extreme, it is radical, it is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so we call it the reckless gun amendment because it is irresponsible, and that's what reckless means, right? It's irresponsible. We believe strongly in common sense gun laws because that is what helps to keep the public safer, to balance out rights. People have gun rights, and that is fine. We do have the Second Amendment. But there has to also be that balance of public safety, and yeah. the reckless gun amendment will put people, put people in harm's way. Yeah. So I know we're coming close to to a, and you, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, to a lay person, if you read this, um, if you read this amendment and you go to the ballot and you have zero knowledge of what yeah. it is, what's the language in there that makes it so dangerous? The reason we want people to consider voting now. Yeah, excellent question, and that and that is actually the crux of the matter. It is. Um, the language at the very end of the proposed amendment says strict scrutiny. And I'm not going to get into details because you really kind of have to have a law degree to, and I don't have a law degree. So yeah. I've learned yeah, like that, a little bit. Legal jargon. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I've learned enough to be dangerous, right? And so strict scrutiny is the highest level that a court has to look at a law if it's being challenged in court. And it has to, um, you can't, at strict scrutiny, the, the, um, Regulation the mm -hmm. is is so narrow that you if you yeah. are challenging a law about guns, yeah, we won't ever be able to get rid of it. We yeah. will never be able to get rid of it, and it will um, it will have an impact on common sense gun laws, current laws, mm -hmm. and also future laws. Should we ever have a legislature that wanted to think about public safety again mm -hmm. um, around gun laws? and they passed legislation, those would be challenged in court, and they would likely be struck down. We've had law professors look at it, and they said there's there is little chance that any kind of com common sense gun laws would withstand um, being challenged in court. Yeah. And so we're not trying to take people's guns away. That's not going to happen. That's some of the rhetoric of the other <laughs> side. Like, that's not going to happen, right? We're not taking away You can't have guns, my pistol. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Um, you still have Second Amendment rights. Yeah. That's not going away. And But we do believe in common sense gun laws that are designed to help people keep people safe. Yeah. Connie, if people wanted more information uh, on this or to look it up, where can they go? They can go to Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws. It's a coalition of over 30 organizations that have been working together for about a year to try and defeat the amendment. At the end of the day, we need people to talk with their friends and family to understand this is not the Second Amendment, that it is extreme, it is dangerous, and it will put people in harm's way. And um, we need people to vote no, beginning early voting this coming week and sure. through November 8th. Yeah. And uh, Connie, will you come back and talk to us about the judges on the back of the ballot? I would love to talk about the judges on the back of the ballet. So awesome. well, we all of that forward, is back there. We look forward to having you yeah. back and we'll get a date to have you back to talk about awesome. that. Thank that, you so much. That's Ron. good. Thank you, Connie. Everybody, if you, please make sure that you're paying attention. Flip the ballot over. We'll say it again. Flip the ballot over. Uh, there is an organization, as you just heard, that is pushing for us to vote no on that measurement talking about gun laws. And that is not talking about taking away guns. It's about having responsible gun laws. We'll be right back on the Urban Impact Show. You just heard from Connie Ryan, the executive director of the Interfaith Alliance. The Urban Impact Show is sponsored by Green and Wood Media Services. Green and Wood uses digital media to help businesses, political campaigns, and organizations grow while increasing their community impact. Green and Wood Media is pleased to offer a digital media buying fellowship to train, develop, and mentor young people interested in digital media, politics, and advertising. Learn more at greenandwoodmedia.com.
And welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. You just heard from uh, Miss Connie Ryan, the executive director of the Interfaith Alliance, and she was talking about uh, a, a ballot, a measurement on the ballot that's yeah. uh, on the back of the ballot. Also, on the back of the ballot, uh, you will see that there are six candidates running for three seats, three open seats for the Broadlands Trustee Board. Mm -hmm. Let me explain what that means. That means that Broadlands is our public county hospital, and because it is paid for by public dollars, you have to vote for what are called trustees that oversees that hospital and communicates on a regular basis with its leadership, with its executive leadership team. That team, that board of trustees, go ahead, you wanted to add Oh, no, there? no, you was doing great. I didn't say nothing. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I mean, you said you act like you wanted to jump in there. I, no. no go ahead, you know what, you know what, go, go <laughs> ahead, Tiara, jump, jump in, what else? I had nothing else, honestly. <laughs> board of trustees oversees the the hospital, particularly you all are, you would be the, um, the supervisors of the CEO. Correct. And you take recommendations from the admin team and, you know, vote one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. So we've had uh, candidates that are running for that seat on this show. We've had Thaddeus Franklin. Um, we've had Wayne Ford. We've had Shaima Ali. And now we have a fourth candidate that is running for that seat, Miss Casey Davis. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome to the Urban Impact Thank Show. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Now, Casey, you, 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 you dropped these off. Yes. And let's let's jump right into it. Tell us, uh, I'm going to give you an easy question first, okay. and then I'll ask you the hard question, okay. okay? I'm ready. All right, the easy question is, why are you running? Yes, yeah, so um, that is an easy question, but it's a long, <laughs> a long-winded answer, but I'll try to make it concise. So I am a family nurse practitioner. I have worked in community health for a number of years. I've worked doing um, like refugee intake physicals. I've worked as a sole medical provider at and the on-site clinic at Central Iowa Shelter Services, which is the shelter on Mulberry Street. Um, and then I've also worked in general family practice at a fairly qualified health center. So I have seen kind of the side of community health and it's just um, something where like, I've seen so many injustices and so many gaps in care that once I saw them, I couldn't unsee them. And I think that, um, you know, the community hospital, Broadlands, is mm -hmm. the pillar of community health. So that is kind of what sparked my interest in wanting to be involved. Community health is my passion. And I think... It's so great you guys are doing this show because I feel like this race and others on the back of the ballot get kind of overlooked. I mean, I'm guilty of that like back in the day too before I woke up and realized how important it is. It's like um, Broadlands is like the epicenter for people. Like it is their lifeline for a lot of our community members. And this election, this board is super important because they help shape how the hospital looks yeah so that's the short the short answer for why yeah, running that's, that's a good answer yes. so okay people run for one of two reasons one yeah. they think a system is already doing quite well and they mm -hmm. want to be a part of that or they think that there is need for improvement mm -hmm. and they want to help be a part of that where are you with broadlands how do you feel broadlands is performing so so for me i definitely i guess for me it's not so I'm in the middle, right? Like, I think that there are a lot of things that they're doing right. And I think they have a really good board. Um, and I'm excited about, um, you know, some of the other people running because there are three seats. And like Shima, you spoke with her, like, she's fantastic. And, you know, her vision and direction, like, really align well with mine. And um, so I think there are things they're doing right, and there are things that they're not necessarily doing wrong, but just can be expanded or changed and improved. So there's sure. room for growth yeah. and change there. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I um, ha have. Have you run for office before? No. <laughs> it's a different thing, you know, when you are 
in the public eye as an elected official. Yeah. And you can't move how or be as free as you would like to be as far as speech go. Um, I saw here that you want to engage the community to ensure equity and access to health care mm-hmm. services. And so m- my question to you is, what does that look like? And what has your engagement to community been prior to running this, running for this seat? Sure. So um, to me, being engaged with the community is like, Bronze is a community hospital. We serve the community, but we need to know, like, what do what does the community want? Like, what do they think that what do what do they need? And I think my perspective that I'm bringing to the board is like I've worked in that capacity, mm-hmm. and so you know I've I've worked in it from the side of being the, like a medical provider. So yeah, you know, that's. I don't claim to know everything that the community wants or is engaged, you know. And that's why we need to engage our community to, like, find out what they need. Um, So I have, you know, previously before running, and I'm not, like, if you can't tell, I'm not a politician. Like, I'm literally doing this because I care. And, um, you know, so my engagement before is, like, working with our community members and, like, trying to get them into care when they needed it and, like, not being able to and thinking, wow, that's messed up. We have to fix that, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. That was really my, you know, you pinpointed the fact that um, it's important to have community-based uh, community-based practitioners. Can you explain exactly, because maybe not everybody understands sure. what community-based healthcare actually is. There's a difference between private and community-based. So kind of explain what that is and how, from a provider perspective, you've really engaged with your uh, with your patients or whomever to make sure that they've had health care equity. Excuse yeah, me. so, um, you know, Broadlands, they will take... They'll take anyone's money, right? Like, they'll take Medicaid, Medicare, private insurance, private pay. Um, You know, from a community health standpoint, it really, in a big in a bigger picture, it just means being engaged with the community. Like that's your purpose is to serve them, Mm -hmm. like serve their healthcare needs. It's not for profit. Um, But, you know, I, just to like give you a quick story, like this is one of the things that I really feel like made me want to run. I used to, like I mentioned, be the healthcare provider at Central Iowa Shelter Services. And this story is a, True story, but it is representative of something that like happened all the time. I had a patient come see me for a sinus infection, and I found out he was a type 1 diabetic with no insulin. He um, was on injectable psychiatric medications, but he did not have them. And then he had chronic ulcers because he had uncontrolled diabetes. And this was all just like for a sinus infection is why he came. So to me... I couldn't solve, like, really any of those issues except for the sinus infection, which is, like, the least right, of, of those. Words, yeah. Right. So what did I have to do? I mean, I had to call an ambulance because he had, didn't have transportation, and he had to go to the ER. So that's what I did, but that isn't what should be done. Like, it You're should right. be a better standard yeah. of care for people. We've got to start really advocating primary health care. Yeah. Had he had a primary care provider and was being seen on a regular basis. And so I think when I'm looking at all these candidates, that's one, th- I'm glad you mentioned that. It's one thing that's really important. And I think Braillons is already doing it. Yeah. But you've got to start from the top. And then we've got to teach our community how to be good patients also. And that's I, the thing. Yeah. And I think too, like we touched on, I don't know if my little thing touches on it, but access is like one of the things that I find like so important. And, um, you know, when I think of access, it's like so many of our community members, you know, they may not have a cell phone. They may not be on a bus line. And how, and those things seem like small things, but they're huge because if you can't get into, if you can't get to your doctor's appointment or you can't confirm your doctor's appointment and it gets canceled, like, how are you supposed to get into care? And if you're just trying to like find your next meal, then no, you're not thinking about your doctor's gotcha. appointment, right? So it's all just like all encompassing, you know? Yep. 
I just don't like uh, going to the doctor, period. Oh, you're not the only one, don't worry. Yeah, I don't like going to the doctor. You're supposed to go to the doctor at least once a year. Yeah, folks watching. On my birthday. (laughs) Yeah, on my birthday every year, I I get myself a full physical. They take all of the uh, tests. Except for one test, because I ain't there it's yet. It's got to happen. I ain't there it's yet. It's got to happen I ain't there eventually. yet, and y'all know exactly the test. <laughs> it's got to happen eventually. Yep. I ain't there yet. I'm 34. I'll do it you when I'm 40. <laughs> do it when I'm 40. Well, Casey, it's been a, a pleasure uh, speaking with you. Uh, we have two minutes left, I believe, so do me a favor. Matt, tell her which camera to look into. Look into that one. All right, Casey, do me a favor. Look dead into the camera, and I want you to sell the people on voting for you so you know give them your name your website how they can get more and kind of some uh pointers on uh on kind of like your key focus points uh, as you get out there and continue this campaign for the last three weeks okay so again my name is casey davis i'll be on the back of the ballot as kathleen casey davis um i hope that you would vote for me i am passionate about community health that is why i'm running that I care about our community. I want to make it a better place. I want to increase access to healthcare. I want to increase, I want to improve equity, uh, healthcare equity. And, um, I care very deeply about our community and about these patients. So I hope that that in itself is a, you know, a driving force for people to vote for me. If you want to know more about me, uh, my website is Casey Davis for broadlawns.com, K-A-C-E-Y Davis, D-A-V-I-S for broadlawns.com. And I hope to have your vote on November 8th or before, even better before. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, you just heard from Casey Davis, who's running for Broadlawns trustee on the back of the ballot. We'll be right back with the Urban Impact Show. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. Uh, I'm I'm excited about what's happening because this civic engagement piece r- really impacts people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it really impacts people's lives. Like whether you believe it or not, uh, that vote no measurement on the back of the ballot on the back of the ballot is uh, is an important piece. Um, you just heard from. Uh, Casey Davis is running for Broadlines um, Board of Trustees. 
uh, along with Thaddeus Franklin, uh, Wayne Ford, and uh, Shaima Ali as well. And so um, when, and now as we shift gears from um, what's on the back of the ballot and we come back to the front of the ballot, on the front of the ballot you have, uh, you have a state Senate seat that is open, which was actually created uh, during redistricting. Yeah. And so when the state uh, redistrict its uh, current districts now, um, there was a Senate District 17, I believe. Senate, yeah. District 17. Yeah. Senate District 17. Senate uh, District 17 was running. And uh, prior to the primary election, uh, we had Alejandro, Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Toya and Isaiah all have all have graced us with their presence. And now that we had now that we're in a sprint to the finish line, um, we have Miss Toya back again. And Toya, which party are you representing? I am representing the Libertarian Party. The, Liber the Libertarian candidate for Senate District 17, Miss right. Toya. Hi. Hi. Welcome Thank to the Urban Impact Show. Thank you for allowing me in your space and thanks for having me. Yeah. So give us something different from what you gave us during the primary. Well, um, I'll just basically start why I'm running. Um, I am a lifelong Iowan. I'm born and raised here. Uh, and so um, I'm used to the jokes of are there black folks in Iowa and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. However, I think that um, I was educated in Iowa's golden age. I have lived through many of Iowa's rights and wrongs. And I believe that helps me have a unique perspective on what needs to happen here in Iowa. Um, I am a former lobbyist. I'm the executive director of Family, Families United Action Network. And over the last seven years, we have co-written or authored um, legislation. And just last year, we had three pieces that we worked on, co-authored or supported heavily that became law. Uh, one of those things dealt with um, adoption, where children who are aging out should have the information that they need their original birth certificate, access to medical records, uh, and maybe even know who their family is so that when they begin mm -hmm. to engage as adults, they un, uh, know who they may be. Yeah. Brother. Exactly. Oh. Uh, and so that was one of our big like things. Uh, we worked with Eddie Andrews on the false allegations um, legislation that passed, which basically says, you know, if someone makes a false report against you to law enforcement agencies, that you have the the right to go back and prosecute for malicious prosecution. Mm -hmm. um, I am also the author of one of the most controversial bills that has come through Iowa here recently concerning the family courts, which um, I wrote a bill to abolish CPS in its current form. Mm -hmm. I believe that the child um, protective system and the foster care system is an indictment on what this state is. And I, I truly believe that if the state was held to the, the standards that they hold parents to, that they would be um, having their children taken away. Mm. And so what I believe is that this agency needs to get back to its original uh, position of human service. Um, and right now, it seems as if there is an improper delegation of power to this agency. Uh, it's the only agency that's allowed to operate outside of the Constitution. So, so Tori, we could do that with a new governor, but not with a new senator. Well, yes and no. So... Um, HF 2325, which was what the CPS bill was, yep. um, it was shelved due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So it had come up, come up for a vote, and then shelved, and we couldn't get any because subcommittees. Because of who's in charge. Let's, because let's, of, let's call it well, out. Well, it may be, it may be, it may not be, because actually... Well, no, they got it, the power to put it up. Or, they do. Or, or leave it. Leave it yeah. They do. So I, I just kind of figure like this. Um, regardless of who's in power, it's to put the things out here yeah. uh, and start to begin to address the issues that we are seeing in our communities here in Iowa. Yeah. It's very problematic, yeah. especially when it comes to minority populations. Uh, we are targets for this particular Ooh, uh, agency. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you are Native American or Aboriginal in, in counties like Woodbury, it could be close to 60 percent. Uh, and so where's Woodbury? Woodbury is, uh, I think it's, it's a west? little 
Or is it east? I think it's east of us. Sorry, okay. y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no. I mean, we, can, we can find it. We can find it. However, but the point is, the point is, is you out here putting in work. Yes. And you not you not just you not just talking. You being about it. Oh yeah. And you are making it happen um, from a policy standpoint. Yes. And trying to figure out how we make life better for people. And so I'm going to shut up and let them ask a couple questions. Go ahead, Brittany. So just quickly, um, you talked about a lot of great things that you've done and been a part of. What would be three priorities that you're going to focus on immediately? Immediately, economic freedom, personal freedoms, and uh, what I call restorative justice, because it encompasses not only family law, but criminal law and civil law as well. Uh, we have to be addressing things like qualified immunity to bring equity and equality back to the law. We need to be addressing things like pretextual stops to bring quality and equity back to the law. We need to really get uh, rid of certain things that are um, what I like to call, um, they're not deterring discretion. So if an officer has the discretion to give you a ticket or not, it should be, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Not that he has the discretion to mm -hmm. give you a ticket or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and so therefore, I'm looking for ways to sure up the discretion in order to have equality uh, pushed out into the law. Under pretextual stops, what I'm looking at is if your headlights out, you don't need no ticket for that. You just don't need a ticket. Did you hurt anybody? Um, and so when you take into account if it's a victimless crime, the only thing that you should be issuing maybe is a warning. Hey, did you know your headlights out? Because I don't stand in front of my car. Right. OK, that shouldn't be something that ultimately creates a debtor's prison because you can't pay the fee or the court costs that are associated with it. Your license gets suspended. And then it's just a, a, a crazy, crazy type of deal. And I've seen that happen to many people. Um, I also don't think that your license should be sanctioned for non um, driving sanctions. So if I'm a, a paraeducator and I have a ticket, it shouldn't be I lose my license to practice. Uh, paraeducation or paralegal or doctoring or lawyering because I had a ticket over here that I couldn't afford to pay. Uh, and so I look for um, small, subtle changes to the law that have a great impact on what how we live. And so while um, I do have what I call a black agenda, I also have what's a people agenda because many of the things that we are advocating for are things that everyone is advocating for. When you live from the bottom, you lift all times. Exactly. So question, my question would be is this, you've done a lot of work not even being at the Capitol, not as a legislator. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that being a legislator would restrict you in any way from getting the work done that you've already done? Because, And to be honest, it restricts most of us when you get into elected office. Well, I think that it doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't is because I'm not beholden to the Democratic Party and I'm not beholden to the, the Republican Party. And so that gives me the ability to come with a different viewpoint. I'm based on solutions. Mm -hmm. So my track record says I work with Democrats and I work with Republicans. I work with independents because I'm actually a people person. I'm looking for the greatest solutions that have the most impact on the greatest number of people. And many of those things can start with minute changes to the law from a shall to a may, from a don't to a can. And so that's the way that I move. So um, over the last seven years that I've been engaged heavily in politics, I've worked with Republicans, I've worked with Democrats, I've worked with rural people, I've worked with urban people, and I just think that the best solutions come from hearing all the voices that you can hear in order to create the best mm -hmm. collaborations. And so that's what um, I look for. As far, I always tell people, look, when we get elected to these positions, you really can't guarantee a change. What you can guarantee is that you work actively to seek the changes that people need to have done. And that means that I need to work with whomever it comes um, to have solutions. Absolutely. Yeah. I know we only have a few minutes left. Um, you've answered these questions beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You've, done a, you've done a great, great job. Uh, I'm looking forward to send uh, this sprint to the finish line here in a little bit. So do me a favor, uh, Ms. Toya, look directly in the camera, and I want you to give them what you got and tell them to uh, vote for you and where they can get more information. 
Hi, I'm Toya Johnson, and I approve this message, number one. Number two, the reason that you should be voting for me is because Iowa needs Toya. Tax solutions, outreach, youth initiatives, and advocacy in action. My goal is to collaborate with all, all stakeholders and create the most impactful, um, uh, most impactful uh, uh, changes to the law that we can have. I am in your community. I'm everywhere. And I believe that Iowa needs someone who understands and brings a voice to those who are voiceless. I think that Iowa needs a totally different perspective. And the fun fact is, is that there's never been a black woman in the Iowa Senate. And so Let's let's really bring Iowa fast forward Iowa and, and have our first black senator. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, y'all. You just heard it. You just heard from Miss Toya, who is running for Iowa Senate District 17. Mm -hmm. She is on the ballot as the Libertarian candidate. Look forward to uh, you all going to her website and getting more information uh, about her. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching the Urban Impact Show. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. I am one of your hosts, Brittany Dudley. What's so, up? Hey. What's up? What's Final that? thoughts. How are you guys feeling? Good. Well, I mean, there's... We got to okay. do your commentary. Yeah, we're... Okay. Let's go ahead right, right. uh, oh, right. on. Yeah, let's go yeah. ahead on and go into it. Let's do it. All right. So, a couple of things. 
All right, tomorrow is the gubernatorial debate. Yes. So we've got that. But today's big news was that the Des Moines Register Elector, um, Electoral Board, they endorsed Deidre Dergier's campaign yes, today. Yes, So that. that was that was great. I was trying to find the article to get the exact language. There was one particular quote that they had in there. We need to, like, enter um, the, the clapping hands or something. Exactly, so. exactly. Yes. That gives our campaign, honestly, big momentum. Yeah. Uh, um, at the right you know, time. At the right time, the final polls are coming out right now uh and you gotta sign in oh. <laughs> <laughs> they charge oh. i couldn't find it though but you know nonetheless so tomorrow we have our one and only debate between our password. gubernatorial <laughs> candidates and um there are a couple of topics that i can't wait to hear their responses on obviously i'm very passionate about uh, reproductive rights and um definitely uh the, the education stuff that Kim Reynolds has been trying to push all. Were you guys? Are you guys going to go to the watch party? Any of the watch parties? I'm having, having one at my house. Okay. Yeah, I've made mine private. I didn't want everybody at my house. Right. But you know, yeah. text me, call me if you want to come. <laughs> you can get people that. in your circle. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I am hosting one at my house tomorrow, and I know there's one um, at MLK Shelter. There's uh, one in Waukee at the movie theater. I think that's one I'm going to go to because that's closer to me. Well, I said the movie theater? At the Palm. The is hosting one as well. Okay, yeah. There are quite a few. So talk to your networks to watch it. Um, it, it will be good. I'm excited because Kim Reynolds is not great at uh, talking off the cuff. But that's me. Why are you looking at me like that, Rob? I'm just ex- I'm, I'm excited about, like, what's, what's getting ready. We have 23 days. We have 23 days left, and I know uh, somebody said to me, Rob, when y'all get to talking about politics, like, I really don't tune in and watch. And I was like, why? It was like, because, you know, it's it's kind of boring. Like, like, I don't really, you know, I don't really care. And for somebody like me, this is like a sport, mm-hmm. right? It's, this, is, this is like a sport. And... Just like people watch football and basketball, you will find me googling, watching, researching, and yeah. you know, like I, you know, almost like you could name everybody on your football or basketball team. Yep. Like you know, I can name the folks on my team. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and like I can, and I play my game the way I play my game, right? Um, and you've had the experience of being a candidate. You know, um, and putting your name out there and running and actually having people vote for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's a that's a different experience. It very much is. There is no there is no like more surreal feeling than seeing your name on a ballot. Mm -hmm. And the first one, both my elections happened within the last year. But the very first one, my mom called me after she uh, after she voted for me. She was crying. And I was like, why are you crying? Because I didn't it didn't click to me like, you know, uh, her daughter's name is on a ballot, mm-hmm. but for us, it is. It's a big difference Absolutely. when big when deal. black women and black men run and we're on a ballot, and you put your name out there. And one thing that I did want to talk about because it is, it has been a couple of phone conversations. Um, is the attacks that we've had our black candidates, no matter which side they're on, they're being attacked by mm-hmm. you know. I don't even know a better way to say it about white people who just don't understand and need a DEI course of some sort, mm-hmm. perhaps. But um, and you know, I saw the attacks on Eddie, on Eddie Andrews, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And even though I vehemently and firmly disagree with Eddie's politics, um, <laughs> yeah. I I still believe in Eddie as a man and as a father and as a child of God. Um, and so, with that, I identify with Eddie as a black man. Yeah. You know, as a father. And I will welcome Eddie to come on this show. I mean, you ain't, I mean, Eddie ain't never ran for no conversation before, so. Uh, you and, know what, man? Unlike most Republicans, he will actually take, hear the invite and come. Yeah. And yeah I yeah. appreciate that about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, well, they ain't gonna vote for me and Johnston no more. No, 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 they will. No, they will. And Shiresh, uh, his opponent, Shiresh Reddy, uh, I invite you to come on this show as as well. We have two weeks left of doing this stuff, and so y'all come come on in. Um, I know next week we're gonna have uh, Sean Bagnuski 
uh, who's running uh, as, as well. And so I'm excited to, I got a message that he'll be here uh, n- next week on the 23rd. So excited about that. But my, my thing is this. I think when you separate party from the individual and you look at the individual, I think you may not vote for an in particular party just because it's that party. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You may vote for a person because of that person, right? And that's why we're giving them the opportunity to come and to come on the show. show who they are, give a different yes. lens into who they are than just them being a Democrat or Republican or... And that's and that's honestly how we should vote. Mm-hmm. That's how we should. I remember when uh, Barack Obama was running, and you know, I I will never forget a conversation. I was walking through Walmart, and this older white man he just stopped me, and he was just like, "You're my guess is you're you're supporting Barack Obama." I mean, this conversation came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. right? And it happened more than once. But then you know, we go through that, and then Ben Carson runs. And, you know, same thing. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You cannot believe that I would vote for Ben just Carson he's black. just because he's black. Yeah. You cannot believe that. Ben Carson is one of the smartest people in the world, right? But boy, did he did he suck at it. He was not a politician. At being at, yeah. at being, I, and he was the, the secretary of HUD? Yeah, he yeah. was the HUD secretary, okay. yep. And now we have a housing crisis. Mm-hmm. Things that could have been set in motion. We ain't saying it's his fault. Two but. years ago. I'm saying it's his fault <laughs> because things that could have been set two years ago, now uh, Secretary Fudge is trying to clean up and make sure. And shout out to Secretary Fudge. I'm gonna text her after this because that's that's my home girl. Uh, she, she, we should have her. I'm, yeah, we're gonna see if we can. Get I need her, your Rolodex. Get her on the, mm, you don't want it, trust me. You come with a lot. <laughs> you know, it, it comes with a lot. Like I said, um, but yeah, no. Now, I will say this. I know we're running out of time. I will say this, though. Seeing what our gubernatory candidate, Deidre DeGere, has gone through as a black woman candidate, Mm -hmm. running for the top of the ticket, has been an eye-opener for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And I know this show, we don't endorse people, so... Opinions stated are those of our own during these segments, but it it is it is really really scary sometimes looking at some of the things that happen to our black candidates across this state. Yeah, I just saw a video of a white older male with his hand around a little boy's throat talking about he stole a bike from his neighbor's yard. The little boy had autism, and um, and I believe there was one other thing, there was one other thing there. But the little boy was standing there, scared out of his mind. And luckily, a black adult stepped forward and was like, look, get your hand from yeah. around this little boy's throat. Mm. Like, what are you doing, right? And what what amazes me, y'all, is that I haven't seen, and I'm getting ready to say it, I haven't seen not one of our black celebrities post this video. I, I I've seen only seen those activists like Talbert Swan, um, Gary Chambers, um, and, and a few others post this t- post this video. Mm. And there's a young lady. I want you all to go follow her. Her name is Teslin. Teslin, uh, she's on Instagram and Twitter. This woman talks about how we have to start looking at our candidates and supporting our candidates. Chase Bank decided, or J.P. Morgan Chase Bank decided, that because Kanye West said... uh, um, uh, it, he was about to go yeah. DEFCON three on, on Jewish on yeah. Jewish people. Yeah. Yeah. in that interview. And yeah. and and when he said that, now Kanye West is a billionaire. That bank said that they no longer want to do Take business yo, with a billionaire. With a billionaire. Yep. I no longer want to do business with a billionaire because of what you said about our community. Mm-hmm. Right? 
Now, I've never seen Kanye get this much feedback from what he said about black folks. Facts. The slavery comment. And, and we keeping him in the news. But, you know, I think you bring up a good point, right or wrong. I would love to see our candidates and the people that support them start standing up a little bit more for what's right and what's wrong. Even look, but look at, look at, look at what happened with our Latino, uh, 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 LA, LA city council, woman? city council woman, right? Making the comment about, about African-Americans, right? Mm-hmm. Calling a little boy a monkey and everything, mm-hmm. right? Um, they were getting ready to get her, uh, give her a pass until they realized she said something anti-Semitic. Mm. And then when they found that out, that's when she resigned. So, well, to be clear, she only resigned from being the president. Yes, not of, from she, city council. She's still on city council. Yeah, 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 not from that city council. That, part of it, being an elected official, because the people voted her in, you can't remove her unless mm. she removes herself. She'd almost have to break the law and be in mm. jail. And even then. That's crazy. Yeah. So, right. I'm really struggling with both parties and not standing up for what's right and what's wrong. I'm guilty of it. But um, also, our black, our black, our black celebrities with with platforms. Yeah, yeah. they like, pick and choose. Like, where yeah. are y'all? They pick and choose. Who right, they... we're we're they're scared. We're picking and choosing because um, of this There's cancel culture. culture. Though there... people get scared. Even think about these people who are Kanye's friends. Not to keep bringing them up. Are even scared to talk? Are even they're scared to talk against him? But because his, of his impact. My thing is this. There's a black woman running for governor in Iowa. There's a black woman running for governor in Georgia. And y'all mean to tell me that these women had to have a hard time fundraising? And we got all of this. And we got all of this black wealth floating around. Are y'all serious? And the Supreme Court just handed over uh, women's reproductive rights to the states? So we got one minute, but um, I wanted to just say this, man. Look, we are we, we are at a time, and I know y'all hear this all the time. This is one of the most important elections of your lifetime. <laughs> Every election is an important election is- because whoever has that seat has the power to create policy, mm-hmm. change policy, or impact policy some way, somehow. Yeah. Stop asking the president to change the police. That's your mayor and your city council. Stop asking your, your U.S. senator to change health care. That's your governor and your state because your state can, can determine what they can get from Medicare and Medicaid and how they enact those bills. And we are going to have to be much more informed voters. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been talking about it. We've been talking about the back of the ballot. Yeah. Um, and it's important that we don't undervote. Yes. Right. Make sure you create an election plan and that you're aware of every single position that's going to be on the front of the ballot and the back of the ballot. Don't leave no spots blank, but also don't just vote because, oh, that sounds like a woman name or, Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds like a black name. Go in there and know who is on the actual ballot. I get get messages every time. Rob, I'm in I'm in the booth trying to vote. Who is this? Who is this person right here? <laughs> and so I be literally glued to my phone trying to respond yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I telling y'all, I get hundreds, hundreds of these messages. My cousin. Well, because a lot of us though don't know, myself included, like over these last few years, had to learn a little bit more. You know, a lot of people don't know. That's why, you know, this this show is awesome. Yeah. Because we're helping. Yeah. It is. Well, that's a wrap for us, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate y'all coming in and spending some time uh, with the family. Thank you for these family conversations that that we've had. I'm looking forward to the last two weeks of yes. what we're getting ready to do. Um, if there is somebody y'all believe we should bring, bring it on this show, reach out to us. Shoot us a message. Let us know. This show is designed for you all. We have no show without you. So thank you so much for your support, and we're looking forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for watching the Urban Impact Show. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.